Well, you're all here. And clock is right now. How many do you bet there are that are just thinking, oh, they're having their coffee this morning. Have plenty of time before worship starts, right? Well, it's good to be here with you. I'm Kerry Bosey. I'm a pastor at retirement. And uh, it's good to be here with you. Uh, welcome to online viewers. Uh, let's see, Deacon Tara will be hosting a family movie party from 4 to 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall. I'm assuming that means today. So, on the 17th, oh, okay. Okay, so on the 17th uh, from 4 to 6 p.m., everybody is welcome. Uh, this week, Wednesday night Lenten service is at, uh, here at Atonement, uh, 6.30, uh, with the supper at 5.30. Do you do soup here? What do you do here? Do you what? Oh. Okay. Well, sounds good. Mon uh, Monday, Thursday worship will also be here at Atonement. That's coming up in a couple weeks, uh, 6.30 p.m., uh, there's no supper for Monday, Thursday, as well as for Good Friday, which is also a 6.30 uh, p.m. supper. The, our meals at the church on Holy Week um, consists of Monday, Thursday communion and uh, the precious word of, of God, of our Savior, given for us. Let's begin with the uh, confession and forgiveness. How about if we stand for that? <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let's confess our sin. Um, in the presence of God, and, and this takes a little bit of, you know, guts, in the presence of one another, too. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Well, here's a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing.
I liked that. <laughs> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the readings. first reading this morning is from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Though God provides food and water for the Israelites in the wilderness, they whine and grumble. They forget about the salvation they experienced in the Exodus. God punished them for their sin, but when they repent, God also provides a means of healing, a bronze serpent lifted up on the pole. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people become impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. From the, uh, from the psalm. You can find it. Is it on? Are we on the screen? No, you have to look in your hymnals is what we have to do. Doreen, oh, are we up here? Oh, okay. Um, okay. That's a long story. We, uh, uh, we started singing these when I came around because I like doing that. Um, and I thought, well, at first we just did it from the hymnal. And then the next Sunday, I forgot to give you time to get to find it in the hymnal. So Doreen said, we'll put it on the screen. I forgot that Doreen said, we'll put it on the screen. So here we are. We'll sing it responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. For, the God, for God's mercy endures forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from all lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. Ten. While we were dead in our sinfulness, God acted to make us alive as a gift of grace in Christ Jesus. We are saved not by what we do, but by grace through faith. Thus our good works are really a reflection of God's grace at work in our lives. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passion of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were, but, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raise us up with him, and seat us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be on our way of life. The word of God. To explain the salvation of God to the religious leader Nicodemus, Jesus refers to the scripture passage quoted in today's first reading. Just as those who looked upon the bronze serpent were healed, so people will be saved when they behold Christ lifted on a cross. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And then this. And this, is, this verse is the preaching text today. You might have heard it before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, 
but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Do you realize that these texts were all originally from a time of, of high, what you might call it, intrigue in the church or between church and synagogue? These were highly volatile times where highly volatile kind of language was used side against side. And so the Jewish people and the Gentiles had, that were becoming Christian, that were following Christ, were under a lot of pressure. They were sought after, vilified, tortured, killed, they needed encouragement. It takes strong words to encourage in deeply dangerous times. And so we hear words like, those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already. See, you might feel like you're condemned, but you're not. It's them. Strong language. And this is the judgment. This is the crisis that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds are, were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Maybe I'll start my sermon with a little bit of a confession. It's not a bad place for us to start, you know. We oftentimes start with confession, don't we? We just did today again. A confession. Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Died that I might live on high, lives that I might never die. As the branches to the vine, I am his and he is mine. Huh. I guess that confession quickly went into words of the gospel. <laughs> Because that is the heart of the gospel to me. Jesus died. Jesus lives. I shall die and live because and only because Jesus died for me. That for me is the heart of the gospel. So when we hear again those beautiful words of John 3.16, it is in that light, the light of the gospel, which always, always sounds like good news. It is in that light that we ought to hear and interpret John 3.16. For God so loved the world. <laughs> so loved the world. Yes, that's good. God's love is good. As an old acquaintance of mine, and maybe yours too, uh, Martha Stewart would say, God's love. It's a good thing. <laughs> hmm? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God gave his son for sinners. For me. 
shed his blood for me, died that I might live on high, lives that I would never die, made me his, and he is mine. Good news. Sweet gospel to sinners like us. Oh, the height of Jesus' love Higher than the heavens above, deeper than the depths of sea, lasting as eternity. Love that found me, a oh, wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. That last line of that verse is one of my favorite ones in all of my favorite hymns. Pure gospel, good news. It's a delight for my ears and it's truth to my heart. Love has found me, oh wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. When I wasn't searching, when I wasn't looking, when I wasn't even aware, it found me. So then comes that part of John 3, 16, the last part. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. These words have served as good news for so many through the generations. So many who find this message to be comforting in the midst of the trials and the difficulties of life, the kind of struggles that can make, a wonder, make one wonder if, if God has abandoned you or is maybe even punishing you. Many people in such circumstances have found hope and courage in hearing again the message that despite all of that, despite all that life can hold, despite all that can weigh down on us, Jesus is trustworthy. Jesus can be trusted to come through with what he promises. Forgiveness, life, salvation, love that finds us, oh, wondrous thought, finds us when we sought him not. Beautiful words. Now, what I'm about to say here might just be out of a, a just a something for me. Maybe it's nothing that's ever bugged you, but I've noticed, haven't you, that we sinners have the capacity to turn even the best gosh darn news into something tainted? <laughs> and it, 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 it is so often, too often, I think, done with the words, these latter words of John 3.16. You see, the sinner in us and all humanity has a propensity, a tendency to see a them and an us, right? A them and us. Uh, them means those that would be different, aren't quite right. They're on the outside, unlike us. So when John 3.16 is turned into insider language, which I believe sometimes it is, it becomes sin. Because Jesus was not about them and us. Let me show you how I've seen this happen. God gave the only begotten Son so that everyone who believes may not perish, but may have eternal life. Of course, the everyone who believes in him is the us in this message. And everyone who doesn't believe, doesn't seek, knock, or ask, well, they are the them. Us and them. And that can slip pretty easily into God cares about us. God doesn't care about them. In the hands of works righteous sinners, 
That is, sinners who really do believe, that part of each of us that believes that how we think, do, and act, and say, and you know how we posture ourselves in life is really what pleases God or doesn't please God. What draws God close to us or pushes God away. That in the hands of works righteous sinners, like what we can so easily fall to, into in, at the drop of a hat because of our propensity to do that, our original sin, the sin of our origin. Because of that, uh, this phrase can become anything but good news. For belief can become in this kind of like an 11th commandment. Thou shalt believe. Maybe a little bit like a 12th commandment. Thou shalt repent. And so the believing and the repenting is what saves us. The believing is, and the repenting is what we must do to be the people of God. We become the first movers then. And God is the responder, the reactor. We're in the lead, not them. In fact, have you ever seen, do you get the same feeling as I do when you see the, the placards, John 3.16, waving at, in the end zones at football games? Do you feel, I get the feeling like that's being kind of used as a hammer over my head. Are you one of those that believes in this? <laughs> or are you not? No, maybe, maybe you're not there. Maybe your mind doesn't go there. Maybe your mind goes... That's a beautiful thing there. And there. It can be a beautiful thing where people turn to that and, and are moved by it. But it seems like oftentimes where you see a placard that's waving, you know, three, John 3.16, not very far, but far from there is another one that says, repent. And it's like the small print says, or else. Repent or else, believe or else, or else you will be numbered among them, those others who chose not to believe, who are headed for, well, you know where. Only Jesus can impart balm to heal the wounded heart. Peace that flows from sin forgiven, joy that lifts the soul to heaven, faith and hope to walk with God in the way so many have trod. What is belief? You know, the kind of that we associate with faith. What is belief? Where does it come from? How does it happen? Well, just a little reminder, a little lesson kind of uh, to uh, us who cut our teeth on Lutheran Christianity. Not all of you did, but historically people of the Lutheran Christian faith have walked to the beat of a bit of a different drummer on the answer to that question. Where does faith come from? How does it happen? Many, if not most in the Christian church, and I'm talking about uh, denominations here and non-denominational churches, uh, most of the Christian church, at least a majority I would say, are pro-choice when it comes to faith, repentance, salvation. Uh, many of our Christian brothers and sisters of uh, congregations do not baptize infants for that reason, because an infant is, of course, too young to make a choice. And you have to choose for Christ. So they baptize at an age when the person can choose. Many uh, decide for Christ. They choose to accept him as their personal Lord and Savior. And that is the emphasis, the choosing. 
Lutheran's sensibility on this is different. Long familiar Lutheran perspective on this reflected, is, are reflected in the words that I sang earlier. Love that found me, wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. You see, Lutheran Christians aren't quite as apt to point to a day when they were born again or opted for Jesus. More likely, not always, but more likely, the faith journey would be described more like this. Well, there was a time, you know, I kind of struggled with my faith, but I'm, I have a strong faith now. Or it didn't matter to me, but now my faith matters. Or I grew to realize I have faith. I discovered faith. It's kind of like saying something happened to me. In Martin Luther's explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, you know that part of the creed where we confess that we believe in the Holy Spirit and, and all those manifestations of the Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the body and the life everlasting, all those places in which we see and believe the, the movement of the Spirit is taking place. In explanation to that, he begins with these words. Of course, what does this mean? He always asks that question. That's the catechetical question. What does this mean? And then he goes on with this answer. It means, I believe that I cannot, cannot, by my own understanding or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. I believe that I cannot, by my own understanding or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. Of course, as many of you know, he goes on to say, but the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and, and kept me and sanctified me in, this, in the true faith, just as he does his whole church. The Holy Spirit does this. The Holy Spirit is the first mover in this. Not me, not my choice, the Spirit. Love that found me, oh wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Now, whether you are Lutheran or not, whether you were raised Lutheran or not, you might or might not believe that way. Most of the world teaches us that choice is everything. Make good ones. Uh, that's how you will live well. That's how you meet success. That's how you make something of yourself. So it's understandable how that can easily come into the church and into our hearts as well. Chief of sinners though I be, Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to Him are known, all my sorrows are His own. He sustains the hidden life, Safe with him from earthly strife. You see, there is the seed in the Lutheran Christian faith that I think lays a fertile ground, a fertile soil for the radical good news of Jesus sent to die for us for our sin, as the verse says. He knows all our wants and needs even when we don't. He experiences our sorrows with us even when we feel alone. He sustains the hidden life. What I don't see, what I don't understand, what I don't want anybody else to see, or what I myself don't know. He sustains the hidden life. I'm safe with him from earthly strife, not because I chose him, not because I invited him, but because he, love incarnate, found me, found you. Oh, wondrous thought, 
found us when we sought him not. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. So then how is it that the way that John 3.16 sometimes can be used by some so it can feel like a word of condemnation of them. Jesus came not to condemn. As was read earlier in Ephesians 2.8, that beautiful verse that we know so well, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. For we are what he has made us. We're not what we've decided to be. We are what he has made us. And what has, what has he made us? What has he made you? Children. Heirs. Heirs to the promise. Friends in Christ who can go forth through whatever is to come and sing, and say, or pray, with full confidence, an honest truth, and a sure hope. And in that singing, saying, and praying, you might use words that sound something like this. Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me died that I might live on high, lives that I might never die. Sing it with me. Love has found me, wondrous thought, found me when I saw him not. You are not condemned by God. You are loved, loved so much. God loves you so much that, well, you know.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise, God's promise to reconcile all things. Let's pray for the church, for the well-being of creation, and for a world that is so in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church. Foster cooperation in mission. Increase interreligious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all who are fleeing persecution or disaster or war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, wildlife. Cleanse oceans, rivers, and inspire us to join you. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love. Free all people from the evils of, of racism, religious strife, hatred. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for, for all whose loved ones perished from pandemic diseases in every nation. Strengthen health care workers and first responders and, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain and those who are hospitalized and those who are afraid for their health future. We pray especially for, for Shirley and Nandrew and Lana and her, and her family and all who we now name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another, for us and for them. Teach us to pray for them. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another.
no parts, sing them. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, findings and fears within, without, oh, Lamb of God, I come, I Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
living God. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.